everyone, welcome back to Life with RA Plus. My name is Nicole, and today we're going to be talking about my diagnosis. So I was diagnosed back in August of 2010. I was ac- it was actually two weeks shy of my 20th birthday, so I was 19 when I was diagnosed. Um, and it all started when um, I used to run. So the year prior, I went on this health kick and I became a vegetarian and I started to run, um, not at first, but eventually I was running um, two to four miles a day. One day, my right knee started to hurt and I wasn't sure exactly what happened because I would stretch before each run and I would do my little at-home workouts before I would run. So as I was running, I felt this uncomfortableness in my right knee. So that day I couldn't even run comfortably and I had to stop and go, stop and go. And then eventually when I came home, you know, I, I wrapped it and I put some ice on it, but um, the next day it was still uncomfortable. So I stayed off of it for about a day or two and I tried again and it wasn't the same. So eventually you know, that uncomfortableness turned into a throbbing and I had to go to the emergency room because it was just bugging me so much. And they do an x-ray and the doctors tell me that they didn't really see anything. So it could have been a hairline fracture. And so they just tell me to stay off of it for six weeks. So I stay off of it for six weeks and, you know, it kind of sucked because when you first start something, you're like, oh, I have to do it. You have to kind of push yourself. And then once you do it more frequently, you start to love it and you start to enjoy it. And then it turns into a routine. So at this point, it was a routine for me to want to go and run all the time. So the six weeks was kind of, you know, it was hard for me because that's what I like to do. You know, I would like to run and just be free and run my little life away. And so after the six weeks, I did try again, but it was not the same. You know, I stretched, I tried to do everything, you know, I was trying to do everything I could so I can run. So I would wrap it, um, I would ice it, put some, uh, what is that, Bengay, the Bengay or the Icy Hot I used to put on. And I couldn't run the same. It was still uncomfortable. And so I stayed off of it for another week or so, but then... Eventually, that ache just turned into a throbbing, unbearable pain. So my mom and I, we went back to the emergency room and they did another x-ray. And again, they didn't see anything. So they told me it could have been a number of things, but they did give me a paper and they referred me to a rheumatologist. And at that time, I'm like, what the heck is a rheumatologist? You know, I've never even heard of that. And so I was reading the paper and it's talking about rheumatoid arthritis and how, you know, seeing a rheumatologist can help. You know, like when they discharge you, they give you all the papers about how to treat your wound or treat. So that's what it was. And so when I was reading the paper, I was like, no way, I can't have this. You know, first of all, I'm too young. I can't have rheumatoid arthritis. You know, you hear arthritis and you just think about older people having arthritis. And so... My mom and I, we make an appointment and we go and see the rheumatologist. And at first, you know, he checks out my knee and he says, you know, it is swollen. Try wrapping it. Um, And he then he tells me, you know, is it possible for you to have any STDs? And the reason why he asked me was because I guess some certain STDs can affect your joints like if it was arthritis. So I told him that I'm in a monogamous relationship, but, you know, I, I could be possible. You know, I'm over here thinking I'm in a monogamous relationship. And so he runs the tests and he calls me and tells me, you know, that's not it. You know, you don't have any STDs. Your test came back negative. We need you to come back in and do a specific test for rheumatoid arthritis. I go back and my knee is still, my right knee is still swollen. You know, it's still achy. It's uncomfortable. I can't really move it the way I used to. So then he does the blood work and he tests me for rheumatoid arthritis. He calls me, he schedules me an appointment to go back. And so I go back and I'm sitting there. And this time my mom actually didn't come with me because she had to work. So she didn't go with me to this visit. So the nurses, they call me back 
and I'm waiting in the room and I'm getting anxious because I'm not sure, you know, what this could be. I don't want it to be rheumatoid arthritis, you know, from the things that I had read, you know, I'm too young. I can't have this. And the doctor comes in and, you know, he sits down and he's opening my chart and I felt like he was just going so slow. And I'm like, come on, man, just give me the results. And so he tells me, you know, unfortunately, you do have severe rheumatoid arthritis. He also told me it was hereditary. So that was news to me as well, because I hadn't heard any of my family members being diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. You know, I heard um, my my great grandparents having arthritis, like, but like only in their hands, um, in their knees, especially my great grandpa, because he used to work at the railroad. And so, um, but it was nothing as severe as rheumatoid arthritis. And all I heard at that point was severe rheumatoid arthritis. And the rest was just like, you know, it took me a minute to process the rest of the things he was saying, because I'm sitting there thinking, how can I have, for one, rheumatoid arthritis. And then he tells me severe. So it's going to progress fast. Like I'm thinking all these things in my head. And then he starts talking about medications and I'm like, what is going on? Are you sure? So I asked him, are you sure that's it? And he said, yeah, you know, your markers came back high. You know, you have a lot of inflammation going on. We're going to get you started on Humira. He's telling me it's a self-injection. So then I'm processing self-injection. Now I got to give myself a shot. And, you know, he's talking to me and just all this stuff is going on in my head. How did this happen? What did I do? What did I do wrong? And how am I going to fix this? And so he tells me, he's telling me about the medications. You know, we're going to get you started on Humira once every two weeks. So he's giving me two syringes for the month. Starts me on methotrexate. And that's to stop the spreading of the arthritis from going throughout the rest of my joints. And at that point, actually, my wrists had started to hurt as well. So it wasn't only my right knee, it was my wrist. So before he even told me that I had rheumatoid arthritis, I was thinking it could have been a number of things. You know, I used to sleep on my stomach and I would sleep with my arms under my pillows. So I was thinking, oh, I probably slept on it wrong and now it hurts. But no, now I knew that my wrists were hurting because of the arthritis. So after he says that he's going to start me on the methotrexate, he tells me that I need to take birth control as well. Because if you do get pregnant, your baby can have severe deformities. So he said um, to use contraceptives as well because, you know, we don't want to take that risk of you getting pregnant while on methotrexate. And then he also starts me on naproxen, which is an anti-inflammatory. And it's just like a stronger form of ibuprofen. So after he tells me about my medications, he checks out my right knee again, and he tells me, you have some fluid in your knee and we need to get it out. So I said, okay, how do we do that? And he's telling me, we got to stick a needle in your knee, a needle in my knee. And he says, we got to stick a needle in your knee and we just pull it out with a syringe. So I'm not exactly afraid of needles, but like the way he was describing it, I'm like, okay. Like I was kind of freaking out. <laughs> so he tells me, so we got to stick the needle in there and we you know we just pull it out with a syringe. So he sprays this cold spray on my knee and he, you know, it didn't, the cold spray didn't hurt. You know, it's just cold. I didn't want to look, but I did look because you know, I was curious. So I looked and he's shoving this big needle in my knee and he's pulling out the fluid. And he pulled out about, I, I believe it was 50 cc. So it's like one of those big fat syringes. And he said, okay, that's all the fluid you have in your knee. And he showed it to me. And I was just, in, I was like, wow, like I can't believe that was there. And so the way I understand it is uh, with rheumatoid arthritis, it starts to eat at your cartilage between your joints. And so the bones are rubbing up against each other and it's causing this friction and the friction builds fluid. So that's why there was fluid between my knee because my, you know, my cartilage was starting to wear off and my joint was, my bones were starting to rub up against each other. I believe that's how it is. So he takes out the 50 cc's and he... He takes off the syringe, you know, you unscrew it, and then he put on 
a cortisone syringe and he injects my knee with some cortisone. And I couldn't believe how fast cortisone worked. I never heard of cortisone before. It's a steroid. They're not good for you. But in my case, it worked and it helped me. You know, so if you guys have questions about cortisone, um, ask your doctor and see what they say. They're not good for you because it is a steroid and you're not supposed to take them all the time. But that definitely helped me at the time. And the nurse comes in and she's going to show me how to do the self-injection for the Humira. So she's telling me you can either do it in the back of your arm. Now, if anybody's ever pinched you in the back of your arm, you know that hurts. So I was like, heck no, I'm not going to do it in the back of my arm. <laughs> then I would really have bruises. So then she said you can also do it on your leg or like on your thigh, and up, on your upper thigh, or you can inject it on your stomach. So because it was summer, I didn't want to have bruises if, you know, it, just in case I did it wrong. And so I did it on my stomach at first. So she's showing me that you got to wipe it with the alcohol prep wipe first. And you pinch your little longha, your stomach, and you just push down on the, it's a pen. So you push down on the pen and you push the button. And so you hold it there. And once the button pops back up, then you can take it off. You take out the needle. It did have a little pinch. You know, there was a pinch. Of course, it's a needle. Um, you know, it's just a little piercing pinch and then it goes away. And they also gave me a biohazard container so I can shove my needle, so I can put my needles in there when I was done using them. You know, you don't want to throw your needles in the trash. We get started on that and all of this is happening in my one visit. You know, I get the shock that I have rheumatoid arthritis. He's pulling stuff out of my knee. He's giving me a shot. I got to give myself a shot. And they give me my prescription for the methotrexate and the naproxen and the birth control. As I'm walking out of my appointment, my mom calls me, you know, because she wasn't there and she wanted to see how it went. So I didn't know how to tell her. I kind of wanted, wanted to wait until I saw her when she got off work because I kind of didn't want, I didn't want to ruin her day, but she called me and I, you know, you can't lie to your mom. I mean, you know, we usually do, but <laughs> You know, I didn't want to lie to her. So I told her and I try to tell her with the most positivity in my voice. And I told her, yeah, he said that I have arthritis. I didn't tell her that I had severe arthritis just yet. So I told her, he said, yes, that I have arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. And she started crying and I didn't, there was nothing I could do, you know, but console her with words. So I was telling her, it's okay, you know, they started me on medications. I already feel better. My knee feels better. He took um, some fluid out of my knee. He gave me a shot, so I'm feeling better already. He started me on my medications, and I just got to go drop off my prescription for the other ones. And she was asking me, you know, are you okay? Um, how do you feel? Not how do I feel like... Um, pain wise, but how do I feel emotionally with what he just told me? And I just try to stay positive And I told her, you know, I'm, I'm okay. You know, it's okay. I'm going to get through this. I can, you know, I can, I can do this. It's fine. I'll be fine. Don't worry. I was trying to console her with my words. And so she goes, okay, I'll talk to you when I get home. And she's telling me, I love you. I love you. So it was just heartbreaking, you know, you know, to hear your mom cry. Well, to hear my mom cry is just so heartbreaking. So after that, I did feel better because I had that cortisone shot. <laughs> so the next day, I didn't go running again. You know, I tried to lay off running because I didn't want it to affect any other joints. You know, I didn't want my other knee to start hurting. So, you know, I would walk. I would, um, because I used to run on a bike path and I would just walk the bike path. You know, I didn't walk as far as I would run before, but I would walk. So after that, um, I took those medications for about two years. And then I actually switched to a different doctor. My first doctor had lived kind of far from me from where I lived at the time. So I moved to another rheumatologist closer. So by the time I saw him, my right hip was starting to hurt. When I see him, 
he tells me, okay, it seems like the Humira is starting to wear off. So I'm just going to increase your dosage on Humira, but keep you on the rest of your medications. So I'm still going to continue with the methotrexate, the birth control, and then aproxen whenever needed. And the Humira, he was, he prescribed me one self-injection every week. So instead of the two, once every two weeks, I was doing it once a week. So I was being prescribed four syringes instead of the regular two. My hip wasn't like in agonizing pain. It was just uncomfortable. After I was sitting for too long, it felt like it needed to pop or it needed to, like I needed to adjust my hip in order for it to feel better. So when I saw him, he gave me a cortisone shot in my hip. This was my right hip. So it wasn't until a while ago, actually, that I realized that it was my right side of my body that the arthritis was affecting first. So I don't know if it's the same for you guys, if you guys have, if any of you guys have rheumatoid arthritis, if it affected one side more than the other, or like you noticed that one side was affected and then the other side. So just let me know if that happened to you because recently realized that, you know, my right side was affected first. So anyway, so he gives me a cortisone shot in my right hip. So the knee wasn't that bad. You know, it will, you could feel the needle in there, but it wasn't bad. But when the other doctor gave me a shot in my right hip, that hurt. I want to cuss, but I don't want to cuss. <laughs> so I want to say that sh hurt, you know, um, I wanted to cry. I didn't, but I wanted to. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm ever going to do that again. <laughs> Because they do offer you full body cortisone. So like they give it to you in your butt. But this doctor, he wanted to get it right where the pain was at. I noticed that when he did it in the joints that it hurt because I had multiple, I've had multiple cortisone shots. So I noticed that when he did it right in the spot where it hurt, rather than a full body cortisone, it did work better. After he gave me the cortisone shot in my hip, he told me that he wanted to do a food allergy test, which is through blood work, because some foods that I'm consuming could be causing the inflammation in my flare-ups. So I said, oh, heck yeah, let's do that. I want to know what I should stop eating because, you know, I was tired of, you know, I wasn't in that much pain, but I was uncomfortable. So I just wanted to know what I could do to stop that. So we did the blood work. So I think he called me back like in a week or a week and a half and he told me to go back to his office and to give me the results. So I went back and he told me that I was allergic to bananas, eggs, cheese, and milk. And so mind you, I was still a vegetarian at this time. So when he told me that I was allergic to all this stuff, I was like, that's crazy because that's pretty much everything I was consuming because I was a vegetarian. And I now I find out that I'm allergic to it and I have to cut them out. So back then they didn't really have any vegetarian or vegan options like they do now. You know, they had a Boca burger and you were lucky if you cooked it right <laughs> because sometimes, you know, it wouldn't taste right. So now I'm thinking, oh, I have to give up all this stuff. Now what am I going to eat? I actually gave myself a deadline, kind of. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, I guess I gave myself a deadline. So I gave myself until this time and I was going to cut all those ingredients out. So I kind of went on a binge, you know, I was eating what I wanted. I didn't, um, I didn't stop right away. So on the last day, it was me, my boyfriend, my sister and her, my oldest sister and her boyfriend. And we went to Olive Garden. And, you know, if you've ever been to Olive Garden, you know, they pretty, put, they pretty much put cheese on everything. And then they come around asking you if you want more cheese. So when we went, I, you know, the salad, extra cheese, my fettuccine Alfredo, extra cheese. I got the fondue appetizer. I got a brownie and ice cream. And I said, this is my last day. And then I got to cut it all out tomorrow. So I kind of went out with the bang. You know, I ate everything that I wanted to. And so the next day I completely cut it out. And I wasn't even exactly sure if it was just the ingredient itself that I was allergic to, or if it was anything that contained it. For example, like Cheetos, you know how they have like a milk derivative? I wasn't exactly sure if I was allergic to the Cheetos or just the milk itself, but I wasn't going to take any chances because I was tired of being in pain. So I cut it all out. So if it was 
bread and it had milk or eggs in it, I cut it out. Yogurts, I cut it out. Anything with bananas in it, so poor banana bread, I cut it out. Anything to do with those ingredients, I cut it out. And after that, I started to eat meat again because, you know, I, like I said, there wasn't that many options before. So I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to eat. I noticed that after I cut those ingredients out, I did start to feel better. It was working for me. Throughout this whole time, I was going to school to be a paralegal. And I eventually got my certificate and I did my internship at a law firm. And at my internship, they actually hired me. So all throughout school and work, you know, I worked there for about a year and a half. And all throughout that time, my flare-ups were, they were okay. You know, I mean, I would have flare-ups here and there. Um, but when it was cold or there was moisture in the air, that was when my body would start aching the most. But also before and while I was on my period, and even till this day, I still get pain throughout my body when I'm on my period. So my hands, my knees, my ankles, sometimes even my toes, they hurt. My shoulders, my elbows, everything. I just feel like a stiff board that cannot move. And I have to get up and push myself because I have a three-year-old that I need to take care of. And, you know, so mom's got to get the work done. I worked at the first law firm for about a year and a half. And then I went to a different company and I was also there for a year and a half, but this company was in a two-story building. So on the first floor is the receptionist area, the bathrooms, a cafeteria area, the lounge area where we'd have our clients wait, the meeting room, and then upstairs was everybody's desks and office. So going up and down the stairs to either meet with a client or go to the bathroom, go to the cafeteria, just to leave or come to work, it did take a toll on my hip and my knee that were already affecting me. So I started a holistic approach. I started to eat organic only. I saw an acupuncturist and I, I started juicing. I would juice about three times a day and I would, I would just make a pitcher and it would last about three big glass fulls. And I mean, sometimes it would last me less because if I was juicing at home, like on the weekends, um, you know, either my baby sister, she's not really a baby. She's six years younger than I. So she's not really a baby. She's my baby, but you know, <laughs> she's not an itty bitty baby, you know, my younger sister, <laughs> I should say, um, or my mom or my boyfriend, whoever was there wanted some, I would make some for them. So, but if it was to myself, it would make three big, um, glass fulls. And that all started because my boyfriend lent me a book he had, and it was a natural cures for any type of disease that anyone might have. And, you know, just a little disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a healthcare practitioner. Um, you know, if you need to speak to your doctors in regards to starting a holistic approach or seeing an acupuncturist, you know, speak to them and make sure it's okay with you, um, you know, because everybody's different. So after... I read it. I wanted to start that approach and that's how I got into it. And that is a story for my next video. So if that's something you'd like to hear, stay tuned and I will see you then.